the Zeus. We got a very nice surprise this week in PTU when the RSI Zeus, a long-awaited ship, was released to backers for testing. And I was on my way to the hangar to take a look at the Zeus ES. Backing the Zeus. Just got into the hangar now, so I'm just walking over to it. And one immediately pleasant feature is that there are many ways in and out of this ship. The fact there is a ladder, great, love that. Uh, what have we got here? Ooh, engineering terminal, that's interesting. Let's see if it works. Coming soon. <laughs> engineering terminal, <laughs> coming soon. I don't say that. Um, suit lockers, the suit lockers look very nice. And then uh, you've got the airlock here. Let's unlock some air, damn it. Ooh, oh my god, that's so cool. There's like a little... The airlock comes out to like a little walkway. That is really nice. They're basically up and down here with the ship that it's putting out. Yeah, it, it, it looks incredible. Yeah. Ooh, it's got a heavy weapon. This is the new Corsair. Three seats in the um, cockpit, that's nice. Yeah. The pilot has great visibility, though few MFDs. I have been struggling to get to grips with the updated MFDs this patch anyway, so for now at least the lack of MFDs was no greater an impedance than having to relearn the entire UI. Two MFDs for the pilot, that's, uh, that's fine, it's, you know. As I was leaving the cockpit, Vlaz was arriving on board. Oh, I do like this ladder entry. This is great. Yeah. Check out the airlock. Oh, okay. Looks like a little door and everything. Yeah. Behind the airlock section is the living space. Uh, what we which, got here? Looks nice, though. That's pretty cool. Another weapon rack, that's cool. This is the galley. Got a nice little window there. I really like the interior styling for RSI and the layout of this galley. And I'd spot one other little detail reminiscent of the Karak. In the galley, there was also a little window into like the hallway of the ship. That's cool, like just like on the, the Karak. <laughs> the living area now then, let's take a look. And working lockers is a big bonus. Yeah, the lockers are storage. CIG, if anyone's listening, do this on the Reclaimer. The Reclaimer's got lockers in its in its crew areas. Make the lockers storage. The hab area has three beds, but in my opinion, they should have just added a fourth. The shelves feel a bit odd. I think it's cool, but I think that, that it's weird not... They may, they may as well just put a fourth bed in, because like it's weird not having... You've got what, what clearly is two sets of bunks. But one of them is like shelves or something, which is yeah, it's yeah, it's fine, but it's also a bit weird. Yeah. The bathroom door, however, was a bit sticky. Uh, oh no, there it goes. So this is the bathroom. Oh, this is. I see what this this uh, fourth one is for. We got the cargo bay, which is it looks good. It it feels smaller than I was expecting, but I mean this is the non cargo variant, right? So it's it makes bay, sense. That's much bigger cargo space at the cost of living space. Yeah. Ramp opens nice. Uh, you let me out of the bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom door is very sticky, it appears. Yeah, it broke yeah. me. I had to use the button in the cockpit. Okay. I, uh, I clicked on the lock button just to see, and it locked. It closed the door and locked it. Now it won't open again after I've unlocked it. I'm trying to open it from this side, but uh, it, the button's just flashing. Give it a yeah, minute. It, it might open okay. it. It took a while for it to open for me. Looking at the ramp, it was indeed quite narrow, and I did wonder what vehicles could fit on board. 
Maybe you could get an Easter and I don't think you could do. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's one up front and then one back here. Vlaz was looking over the components when he'd spot another intriguing addition, ready for engineering coming soon. Power plant, cooler. Uh, Two battery slots too. Yeah, there's battery. One up front. Oh yeah, what is that top of? Oh, that's fuses. Oh yeah, there is, oh my God, there's fuses, yeah. Yeah. Presumably then, this is also the styling that the um, Polaris is gonna have. Yeah. It's nice. I think they've done a good job with the RSI kind of style. So it was time to take the Zeus for a flight. Currently, at least, the best looking ship. Yeah. We'd be heading out to try Bounty or two, and with the exception of some strange pilot override stuff going on when Vlaz entered the co pilot seat, the flight out of that moat was very smooth. Once in orbit, I would find the same mission. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool that you have the light controls. That's a good indicator that there's going to be something with it. We were heading in to take down a bounty target, and on the way in I had time to think about the Zeus and the potential gameplay that it allows. This would be a really good life aboard ship. Closing in, the target was not very formidable. The cutter. I see, I might just be a car. Hop into the co pilot seat myself for a quick look before deciding to give the ship single turret a go from the gunner seat. I want to jump on the gunner, I want to try, I want to take a look at that. Yeah, the turret. You get a pretty good view, like from like this seat, like you, you can still see out the windows and everything. It's not, not, not too obstructed. Turret coverage, pretty good. Once in orbit, I'd have the opportunity to test fire the guns down here. Can we go to SCM? Oh, sorry. There we go. And then behind you, or? Yeah, right behind, it can fire right behind. But once they've added a turret that doesn't have some like ridiculous blind spots and you can fire the turret from the cockpit view as well. I can fire it when I'm not in the turret view as well and I can use head tracking nice. to aim it. That's pretty cool. I, I do kind of like that. But it's drive. We can see. The next bounty target was all the way down around Houston, so we'd have some travelling to do. And as we made our way out there, the subject of the ship UI and MFD rework came up, and especially changes to power management. I mean, the only things that I don't like, I think, are power and how that is situated. I don't like it. I think it's, like you said, it's really dumb. Yeah, the power, the power management is awful. 
the UI team in this game are not they're not very good. But one of the best pieces of UI they've ever created was the power triangle. It's clear and easy to understand. You could read it immediately. Like that is one of the best bits of UI in the game, and they've replaced it with something that you literally need to use a scroll wheel to see the whole thing. Who made that decision? It's so weird. Yeah. They, and that's and that's the one thing that I saw. It's like, okay, why do you have to scroll over? Like, as a single pilot, you're not going to be able to do that. No way. And, and so, to me, I think the solution will be to return the power triangle to the pilot, but to have the more detailed one for engineering. The new power management UI is kind of not suitable for pilots at all, and I am not a fan of it, but I was at least able to interact with it from another seat in the ship, meaning bridge crew could handle it on multi-crew ships. It's very cumbersome, but I can do it. Yeah, I see you changing it. Now, you can probably assign keybinds to all of this, but having to relearn how ships work all over again is a major source of friction in my opinion. Before we could ponder this though, the enemy was getting close. Oh, here they come. Okay. Size guns on his turret, you know. Three. Okay, cool. That's not that's not too bad then. The counters. Now I feel like my aim with turrets is pretty bad. I like to use the auto gimbal, but as far as I can tell, remote turrets don't have it, so the fight would take a little time. Okay, yeah, we're getting so. Oh, oh. He crashed into us. I think, it, yeah, he just crashed into us. <laughs> uh, let's try the other way. Oh, the contract's complete, but here's the, yeah, the other target. The other one. After all, he's in some of us. The second NPC would suffer a similar fate. We hit an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> the lower part of the turret UI doesn't have uh, lead pip. Like if you're in the like that bottom circle, like it doesn't have a, a lead pip down there. Now there is another variant of the Zeus coming along with the ES, the cargo focused CL, and we were heading back to take a look at that next. One thing I just found um, is that from the the airlock, the little airlock walkway, it's real easy to get on top of the ship. You can just walk out on top of it. Mm. Oh, okay. So that, that pixelation that we saw in the hangar is now gone. I wonder if that was just a rendering bug that fixed us. I don't know. Yeah. Weird. Oh, so close on the ramps. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. The cargo space of the CL is significantly larger at the expense of living space. So you look oh, at this cargo fast. bay and then you look at this cargo bay and they're similar but the, that, that one is just a little bit wider, right? Yes, okay. So they're talking about these little blue zones. Well, you will not be able to get over here. That makes sense. If you fill this up, you won't even be able to walk. Uh, no. This door back here. But I mean, you've got you've got other ways out of the ship, right? So. Yeah, yeah, night, yeah. 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 The galley is much smaller than that of the ES. Also, the the small window into the corridor is missing on the CL. Yeah. From the kitchen. Yeah. It's not bad. Though. I mean, the kitchen is it is smaller, but not too much. The uh, the living area is basically basically almost unnoticeable. You know the yeah. difference. The bench yeah. is missing. That's it. Yeah. The rear cargo uh, ramp is really narrow, by the way. I also like the little, you got the Corsair style platform coming into the cargo bay, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm. Do you have that on the other one? I don't think you do, do you? No, it's just steps. You just got steps going up. But there was another key difference between the two, and I wanted to take a look at it. 
Would, do either of these have the track to be in control? The co-pilot. The co-pilot. The tractor beam of the CL has quite a unique setup compared to existing tractor beams. As you can see, the beam is mounted on an arm that deploys from the ship, giving a much better view into the cargo bay. Ooh, and that's that the position is real good. The tractor on. beam. Yeah, though I tried to load that 32 SU box and it didn't work. It spins all the way around really smoothly, that's cool. Yeah, it was funny. I, I, I never thought the the clipper would be uh, like that interesting, but you know, it, it is actually kind of appealing. I have to admit. Yeah, it only has like one shield less and a lot more cargo space. The Zeus is a very exciting ship. They have no doubt will be very popular once it hits live. I think it is even possibly one of the best ships in the game now, with its ease of use, low crew requirements, and modern features throughout. Not to mention it is very good looking. But that wasn't the only new development this week, as a favourite ship of mine, the Terrapin, was finally given a paint slot and its very first paint. And I was also eager to go take a look. After leaving the hangar, I was heading down to meet up with Chris to discuss the new paint. Yeah, this paint, I mean, I'm excited that the Terrapin has got a paint. This paint looks like, it, it looks like a prop from the 90s Nickelodeon show, Guts. It's a Terrapin that is not in its standard colours, that's, you know, oops, so rare. Ah, Star Citizen. And we have an amazing game package to give away courtesy of CIG in a celebration of Halloween. A pack that contains an Anvil Terrapin, lifetime insurance and the purple haze paint that you've just seen in the video. For your chance to win, just hit the like button and leave a comment below and we'll pick a winner in the next couple of days. And of course, a huge thank you to CIG for sending an awesome prize like this our way. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our very generous patrons that you can see on screen right now. These very generous people keep this channel going with their support and I just want to thank each and every one of you for choosing to support the channel. Thank you. We'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.